Hello and welcome to the 86th video in the series programming a chess engine in C. So into the last couple of videos really of this series now I'll be uh, doing some more series connected to this engine but I'll explain that in the second of these two videos. In this video I just want to quickly talk about one the results of some testing I did for Vice and two some changes I made to the code. And in fact I'll start with the code first. I compiled the program in the last couple of days with all warnings enabled with a compiler and found, as you've probably seen going through the series, some small errors in the code where variables were declared and not uh, then used or functions were defined as returning an integer and should have been defined as void and vice versa and some small things like this that weren't actually affecting the running of the program on this computer I'm using for the videos but did on another computer I compiled on my main computer that I compiled the program on. An example of this was I had never initialized the quit variable in the info structure to false at the start of the program and as such by some twist of fate on this computer it was initializing to zero anyway um, so therefore quit was set to false effectively but didn't on my other computer and as a result when I went into the UCI loop and ran inside the UCI loop well because I don't have a continue at the end of any of these else if statements it drops here checking for quit before breaking obviously it just then quit because it was non-zero so it processed the UCI command and nothing else which gave a couple of minutes of frustration before finding out uh, where the silly error lay so that's been corrected the other thing I've done is I just need to open validate where is it the other thing I've done is I've added a couple of other functions into validate.c and I went through every single code file and really added in, in a lot of places, more asserts, as many asserts as I could think of actually, to test all arguments and to test various uh, settings inside the function. Um, so there are a few more asserts inside the hash table probing, like here. And I think in PV, uh, not PV table, inside search.c as well at the top, for instance, in the pick the next move, I put the asserts in here. So essentially where arrays were accessed or where I had arguments to a function within reason. So for example, I didn't do check board in the um, is repetition here because it's just been called at the start of alpha beta. But within reason, I check the accessing of arrays, that the bounds are correct, and also the arguments for the functions are also correct. What I then did was I took a position file, is it still in the directory here? Yes it is, called LC2, which is a very well known test position file that used to be used years ago for testing the strength of engines. And it's POS means positional, CMB combinational, FIN and end game position. And I put the engine on debug mode and left it running at tw for 20 minutes thinking for each position overnight. So about 10 hours of thinking in total to see if any of the asserts triggered and none of them did. So that left me feeling that it's, I wouldn't say ever bug free the code, but pretty much uh, stable. There were no crashes. And that's all there is really to say about the code. Other than that, I don't think there's anything else I've changed inside. I've deleted a couple of variables out of quiescent search, which aren't used anymore. And that's about it. I've made this less than equal to zero here, just in case, although it should never be anything but equal to zero. It should never go to minus one. Um, and I think if it, ah, and the other thing I've done is I've added another condition in the null move cutoff that not to cut off if we've returned a, some kind of mate score. So if we're getting mated, then not to return a cutoff. Okay, so onto the tests that I did then. The I did three tests in the end. I did a, P, a pure versus TSCP, which means with no hash cutoffs and no null move. I did a null, which means with null move cutoffs, and then the hash version is with null move cutoff and hash table cutoffs. And I played 60 games against TSCP using a Newman test suite, which you can find via the Ribka page. It's a good uh, broad selection of 30 openings. Each played as white and black and played with a 1 minute plus 1 second time control. I was doing 5 minutes plus 2, but I ended up with um, some problems with the computer and got annoyed and in the end left the three tournaments running in this way to save a bit of time. I then used Bayes ELO just to have a look at what the, how the ELOs compared of the programs. And that's what I wanted to talk a little bit about in this video more than anything. 
The results were pretty much as expected, so you'd expect null move to give you around 70 ELO. Um, actually, the hash cutoffs on top of null move gave more, a lot more than I expected when you look at the ELO results like this. But what's important, and this is something to know if you ever go into developing and improving a chess engine, what's important to note is the error margin here. Um, we've got plus 78 minus 66 ELO on these error margins. So effectively, these two almost overlap. In fact, they do they do um, overlap. So actually, technically, it's very hard to say whether the hash cut version is better than the null cut version. Uh, one would assume so, but from these data here, because the error boundaries, you basically take, I think, somebody could correct me probably on the maths here, but I think I take the square of one plus the square of the other and square root them to get the error margin between the two. But if I take um, 66 squared and add it to, or are we, 63 squared, and then square root this, get 91. So the error basically overlaps here. So it's theoretically, there's no difference between these two, although the ELO says this. And this is something that's really interesting to note. Um, when you think often when you play maybe 10 games and what engine wins, that engine's stronger. And in fact, when TSCP was playing against the hash version of Vice, the, oh no, sorry, it was the null version, the score at the end of the first 10 games was 5 all. Now, if we just played 10 games, we would have said, oh dear, they're the same strength, something's gone wrong. And it just happened that Vice then pulled massively ahead in the rest of the games and finished with 72%. For the hash version, it was different. So... When you're testing, to get down to an error margin of, say, plus or minus 5 ELO or 10 ELO, you're going to need around 3,000 games, and you're going to need varied starting positions. You can't just loop through, say, the same suite of 30 positions again and again. So you can see why proving engines becomes difficult. And, and the top engines out there, so Stockfish, Houdini, things like this, these these people have tuned their uh, their engines a huge amount, and if you read on somewhere like TorchChess.com, there are a lot of posts and threads, and also from the authors of the top engines. One author, Don Daly of Komodo, posts a lot on there about tuning, and they do thousands and thousands of processing hours, having written their own referee programs to run the tournaments for them. Of every chess, every tiny change they make, they test over thousands of games. First at very, very fast time controls, and then at slightly slower to verify. So the results came as expected in ELO, but the error margins, apart from the TSCP being definitely weaker than the null and the hash versions, their error margins overlap. What you can do, though, is make something called a likelihood of superiority. And if this is, it's generally accepted, if this comes out at 98 or above, then the engine is better. It doesn't tell you by how much, but tells you that it's better. And here we can say defin for definite that the hash version of Vice is stronger than the normal version of Vice and of TSCP, and we're almost certain that it's stronger than the null version. So overall, I was quite uh, happy with the results. For future improvements in Vice, the way I'll probably do the testing is what I've written here. I would let Vice play its one minute plus one second, and I would actually, to save time, find a set of really strong opponents, but only give them two seconds plus 0 0.1 increment, and try and probably then hope to get a few thousand games each change like that. So that's it then really for this video. It's just a bit of explanation about what's going on. The code's available for download and you can see the changes. It's not really worth me talking through them. Oh, and there's one more change I do need to tell you about. I've added in uh, from the UCI protocol an option to set the hash value uh, in megabytes and I've also added this with the memory command inside the export protocol as well. So the hash uh, amount is now dynamically set and the code, it's not very difficult code, I don't think it was worth showing how it was done in this video, but here we see now that the init hash table function now takes a megabyte argument and then the hash table is set up for the number of entries like this, which is why we originally wrote the function with dynamic memory allocation in this way rather than fixed. Okay, so in the next video then, I'm going to prepare now, and the video will probably come tomorrow, I'm going to prepare now sort of a release version of Vice with a README and the uh, GNU license with it as well, with the code, so you can use it with the license, and I'll release that probably as version 1.0, and then I'll talk about what I'm going to do in future series, because it doesn't 
end there, for example, maybe a series over magic big boards or something like this. So thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.